Heavenly Father, we come with thanksgiving for the ability just to give. For Father, if you have not first entrusted us with it, we could not give. But also, Father, we thank you for hearts of faith that trust you rather than what is in that plate. Father, might you use these gifts, but Father, also use what we hold on to and use us all to your holy will to bring glory to your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I think this is the 23rd time. We don't normally turn the pulpit over to a group very often, uh, sometimes a special occasion or something like that, but there's one group that we reserve one Sunday a year for, and we turn it over to them, and that's the Gideon International. And I said, I've been here for this is the 23rd time that that has happened uh, in my time, but they were coming long before that, so this church has... Uh, has been open to the Gideons for a long time. We have a number of men in the church that are at Gideon. But um, I'm not going to say any more about it at this particular time, except uh, I think probably that's first or second or third time since I was here, a young man said, I think I can do a part of that. Now he's become very uh, active in the Gideons, and I'll turn it over to Tom Trexler to let... He's no longer a young man. <laughs> Me and golf this last week, and he just gives us a little extra comment. <laughs> Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I was a young man when I joined the Gideons 20 years ago, but I had an incredible blessing to be able to go to Africa, as many of you have heard as I spoke about that uh, in 2008, to Nigeria to hand out Bibles there. But one of the most special parts of that trip was the man who's going to come up and share our Gideon message with you. He was on that trip with me. Uh, Ralph Davis. And I, I've known Ralph a little bit before then, but I really got to know him on that trip. And Ralph will be bringing our message today. And Ralph, I saw in Africa the people there in Nigeria just sensed his servant heart. And they just fell in love with him, whether it be on the airplane or wherever we were, at schools or prisons or hospitals, everybody wanted to be around him. The people there just, they sensed his servant love for Jesus Christ. He's a member of uh, the Gideon International Outreach Committee now, which is a committee that's set up. There's, I think, seven men who serve on this committee around the world, and they have the responsibility of overseeing the ministry in what we would kind of consider third world countries. 178 of the 192 countries that Gideons are in can't afford scriptures on their own. And Ralph and the committee helps to determine where the scriptures will go in those countries and how they'll be distributed in the support of those countries. Uh, he's had the privilege of being able not only to go to Africa, but go to Bogota, Colombia, Peru, and he just got back from Venezuela. I'm sure he'll be sharing some of that today. But he and his wife, Cindy, live in Warrensville, North Carolina, north of Boone, and they have served side-by-side side in Gideon ministry since 1977. Y'all might have given me one of those fifth-grade testaments. <laughs> <laughs> He recently finished a three-year term as the North Carolina State President of Gideons, and Cindy, after finishing her three-year term as the North Carolina Auxiliary President, is now serving as the International Auxiliary Cabinet Representative. He's a chairman of his church deacon board, adult Sunday school teacher, and a retired home builder by occupation. Ralph loves the Lord, and always thanks him for the opportunity to serve him. Good morning. morning. What do you want to do when you grow up? I'm not talking just to the young people. I'm talking to all of us. You know, sometimes we think we're grown up. It's a question we ask when we're distributing Bibles to a classroom, and the young people there would say, oh, I'd like to be an airplane pilot. Another would say, I'd like to come to America. Is your country as beautiful as I think it is? Of course we'd say yes. A little boy stood up and said, I'd like to make a difference in the world. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? 
What do you want to do when you grow up? Would you like to make a difference in the world? There's men, women, boys, and girls today that's never heard about Jesus. They've never seen a little book like this, but they'd like to. They've heard about it. They've got a promise that one day someone's going to come to their classroom. Someone's going to come to the hospital. Someone's going to come to the jail. And they're going to present them their very first copy of the Word of God. Now that's exciting. You remember when you got your first car? You remember your first sweetheart? All of those are important. But the number one thing is knowing Jesus. That's the key. That's our future. We got a lot of people in this room this morning. And I hope as you grow up and you make a difference. I know you are making a difference. Pastor, it's a blessing to be here this morning. I know uh, about this church. Brother Tom, Michelle, and their family. They love this church. Y'all are making a difference in the world. Because you support a ministry whose only purpose is to see men, women, boys, and girls come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So those who've got a Bible this past year, these past 10 years, these past 20 years, every long this church has been supporting Gideons, on behalf of those people who've received them for the very first time, or maybe in a motel room picked up a Bible for the very first time, I want to say thank you on their behalf. Because there's lives been changed by the Word of God. Isaiah 55, 11 speaks very clearly to that. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper and thank for it I send it. Every testament we put out around the world, last year 78,900,000, we believe that it's all going to come back to what God sent it there for. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here this morning. You wouldn't be supporting the Gideon ministry if you didn't believe it. And those of you who are Gideons and those of you who are auxiliary, you wouldn't believe it or you wouldn't have joined this. God's call on your life. You would have never gotten involved. We're busy in church, aren't we, Pastor? We've got lots of things going on. And when I was asked to become part of this ministry in 1977, first thing I said, I don't have time. I thought I didn't have time. We're raising children, youth group at church, coaching Little League, very busy in my business, very, very, very busy in the church. We didn't think we had time. I want to share something with you this morning. I don't know if you have your Bibles there or not, but if you do, I'd like for you to turn with me to John chapter number 20. probably uh, won't read it uh, verbatim, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what happened here. John chapter 20, really it begins about verse 19, but (laughs) Jesus had been crucified, and he had risen from the dead, and and he came back on, on the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, and he stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he said, so said, he showed unto him his hands and his side. And then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Listen to this guy. But Thomas... One of the twelve called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. In verse 25, the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Listen to this. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. You ever been there? I don't believe it. You ever said that? Can't be. I can't believe it. Verse 26, and after eight days again, his disciples were within, listen, eight days, and and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, 
the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and he said, Peace be unto you. And then he spoke directly to a gentleman named Thomas. Then he saith, then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Do you know that Jesus knew exactly what Thomas had said eight days earlier? So he challenged him. In verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Do you ever think about this? There's something different about every person in this room here today. As a matter of fact, there's something different about you from every other person in the world. You know what it is? Your fingerprints. No two has the same. And when Jesus told Thomas to take his finger and touch his hand, and he told him to throw his hand into his side, it was a test of faith. Eight days earlier, he said, no way. He couldn't have been back. But eight days after, he came face to face with Jesus. And he challenged him. Have you ever taken your finger and touched his hand? Have you ever thrust your hand into his side and say, I believe? There's people today around the world who have heard about this man named Jesus. Nobody's ever told them. Nobody's ever had it. They've never had a copy of the Word of God in a bedside table in a motel room. They've never had one given to them in the fifth grade. They've never had one given to them at the fire department. No one's ever come to the jail. No one's ever come to the military induction center. Nobody's ever given one on the street because they didn't have it to give. And that's where we're at today. Where did he say to go preach the gospel? He said into all the world. Matthew 28, 19 speaks very, very clearly about it. Do you believe this morning that your fingerprints make a difference? You should be saying, yes, I believe. There's people in this room today who can tell you that a copy of the Word of God changed their life because someone cared enough to give a little offering so we could purchase this little book for a dollar and thirty cents and we could give it free to another hand. It's a free gift. Now I just got back from Venezuela and I don't speak much Spanish. I don't know how much Spanish you speak. But they understand Gracias and they understand Bonadis and they understand Origala which means a free gift. Oh, regala. And they say, gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. There's people in Venezuela two weeks ago, 120,100, that each one got a copy of the Word of God for the first time. The first time. And your church was involved. Your fingerprints, pastor, is all over this Gideon ministry around the world. Not one church can do it. We all do it together. We're all one in the Lord, distributing His Word around the world. I'd like to take you this morning on just a little quick trip. If you'd uh, share with me. Tom spoke to you about being in Nigeria. We thought everything could go wrong, went wrong, getting there. We missed the plane in Atlanta, Georgia, by three minutes. But God had a plan. We got to speak to Darlene, a hairstylist, the next morning about Jesus. She, she said she'd been out of the will of the Lord. I remember very, very clearly, Tom, how we each had a little something to say to her. And we gave her that little testament, and tears came in her eyes. She said, I must get back in church. Well, Nigeria is a country that's a very poor country. Per capita income, $241 a year. Average life expectancy, 41. 41. 
I watched a program yesterday on TV. Are you expected to live as a man 71, 81, or 91 years? Are you as a lady expected to live 74, 84, or 94 years in America? Average life expectancy. What if it was 41? We'd begin to make some we begin to make some decisions, I'm sure. But this is a little quick trip to Nigeria. We got there one day late. We were flying into Calabar from Lagos, and we couldn't get in. It was a terrible storm. We had to go back. We had a dear lady that stayed with us, a lady we'd never met before. She said, don't leave this airport in Lagos until your friends come pick you up. And there we were, and we waited, and we waited. And finally, we got somebody to come, used her cell phone to get them there. But the next morning, we flew to Calabar. I had no more got off of the plane until somebody grabbed me and said, we must go, brother. we got work to do. His name was Willis Uby, a Gideon there. And we jumped in his old Toyota, and away we went. This is the first distribution. 540 children from this school at the ring of a bell from the headmaster who we had just given a copy of the Word of God for his desk, the first one he ever had in his school. And we asked, is it okay to give your students a copy of the Word of God today? And he rang a bell by hand, and they came to the assembly yard. And there the box is set. Now, they're not looking at me. They're looking at something that's going to be free. Each one of them could get. All 540 of them. And they waited very patiently as we distributed the Word of God to them. Is it important? Is it important? Of course it's important. This is a school sitting over there in the field. And you'll notice of all the schools we went to, and Brother Tom can attest to this, never a vehicle, not one. Everybody walks, not a bicycle, nothing. And we distributed Bibles to three schools that morning in a, in a police department. And we're looking very, very carefully for this school that's on our list. As a matter of fact, we never did find it. But we saw this school sitting over in the field. And I said, maybe that's it. So as we started down that little road, I thought, uh, Brother Willis, are you sure we can go over there after we've made the decision? And he said, oh, Brother Ralph, don't worry about it. He said, that's a government road. I said, well, okay, <laughs> we'll just go then. So we rode over there, and, and we, we go up, and we ask for the headmaster, and that's Ms. Yubi, the lady in the burgundy. And we presented her a Bible for her, for her desk. We went to her little office. Now, in the schools there, there's no windows, and there's no padded floors. Most of them are dirt, some are concrete, and the concrete's broken. No wooden desk, just boards, and then nailed up on each end for a desk, for a chair. And we asked Miss Yubi a few questions as I was sharing with her. As I was talking to Miss Yubi, she became very interested in what we had to say. I said, Miss Yubi, we're here today with the Gideons International. And we've come to give each one of your students a copy of the Word of God. And she raised her hands and she said, Divine revelation, sir. What would you say? I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I don't understand. She said, sir, we've been praying for years for someone to come to our school and give our students a Bible. I said, how many do you have? She said, 217. We had them with us, and as we were talking a little bit more, she says, well, we're having our Bible club today at 12 o'clock. And I looked on this little makeshift bulletin board, written in crayon, Bible club, 12 o'clock today. Of course, I looked down at my watch, and of course, it wasn't hardly that time of day. And I said, Ms. Yu, we'll be back at 12, it's about 10 minutes to 11, and we'll distribute the Bibles to those students. Very sternly, she looked at me and said, Sir, you don't understand. I said, I'm sorry. She said, We're having Bible club today at 11 o'clock. She was not going to let us leave with those Bibles that we had brought to her desk for her, for her students. But there was something else happened in her room that day, in her office. 1989, I read a letter from our international headquarters, and it was from a boy, 14 years old in Nigeria. The letter says, Dear Sir, 
I am boy, 14 years old. May God, our Heavenly Father, bless you. There's but one Bible in school. Cannot read Bible but one minute a day. I beg you, sir, please send Bible. Can't send Bible? Send Testament. Can't send Testament? Send Gospel Tract. Can't send Gospel Tract? Send one page of Jesus' book. And there on her desk that day was that little Bible. The only one they had in school. A little personal worker's testament, as we call it. Psalms and Proverbs in the New Testament. And my heart was about to jump out of my chest. And I said, Ms. Yubi, would it be possible that I could take that testament back to America and show the people about the only Bible you had in your school and how 217 students and the staff read it? She said, it's no problem. Right there it is. One testament for that staff that you just saw and 217 students. She was excited. They were getting a brand new Bible for each one, and each one of the staff was getting a brand new Bible. Free. And this is what she said, Pastor. She said, I want you to tell them about Jesus today and how they can be saved. Could you do that? Could you stand before someone and tell them how to be saved and how to come to Jesus? Well, my heart about jumped out of my chest. A foreign country. Different skin color. Everything different. But on the inside, it was the same. So that day as we distributed those testaments, I shared with them a plan of salvation. I didn't count them. I don't know how many of the words. 30, 40, 50. But it wasn't what I did. It's what you did. Because your fingerprints was on each one of those testaments that was given to those children that day. So God be the glory for what he's doing around the world. Venezuela just got back. Have you ever been to Venezuela? Anybody? Hey, brother. Great trip. It was a blessing. We were told a lot of things about Venezuela, but it wasn't true. The people were very receptive to the Word of God. Well, this didn't start when I got off the plane in Venezuela. It started when I was getting on the plane right up here in Charlotte, North Carolina. 4.30, October 13th, I was there. Had all my itinerary, all my vouchers, everything to get on that plane. Well, I went to the kiosk. Denied. Went to the desk, talked to Wendy. Wendy said, Mr. Davis, I'm sorry, you're not in the system. I said, not in the system. I said, I've got everything. She said, I'm sorry, sir, you're not in the system. Boy, that'd be sad, wouldn't it? You think you're getting on a plane? You think you're going to heaven? You think all everything's right? But you're not in the system. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I paid for this flight. Everything's done. She said, sir, it's not here. Maybe you need to call your travel agent. Well, the travel agent is in Nashville, Tennessee. That's 3.30 in the morning. There's not a shop anybody's up at 3.30 in the morning. So I went over to the phone, Tom, and I made a phone call. And I called. Nobody answered. I went back over and I said, Wendy, please, try it again. She plugs it up. Nothing. I said, what am I going to do? She said, I can sell you another ticket. I said, how much? 1700 one way. I reached in my pocket. I got my credit card. I said, wait just a minute. I'm going to go over here one more time and try that phone number in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, I did. No answer. You know what I did then? I prayed. I said, God, I don't know what's going on, but you do. And if it's your will for me to be on that plane, if I need to sign that ticket for $1,700, i am in. So I went back over and I said, Wendy, we're on a first name basis now. I said, Wendy, try it one more time. It was 520. The plane leaves at 550. She hits that computer. She looks up and she says, I can't believe it, Mr. Davis. It just popped up. 
Everything was good. I said, get me that ticket out so I can get on that plane. You see priority written on it? She said, there's no way you're going to get on that plane. I said, Wendy, you can make it happen. She said, I'm going to write priority on it. And I said, you come out behind that desk and you escort me through, please. She walked right out behind, came right out front. I grabbed my carry-on and we went through. When I got to the plane, I went in and the door closes. Tom, I don't know how many times God's going to test us, brother. But we got on that plane. And I got to Venezuela. It didn't cost the extra 1700 God had a plan. You see those hands? They got a copy of the Word of God for the first time. The principals went with us. Schoolroom to schoolroom. I'm talking about 5th grade through 12th and then the universities. You know what the principal said? We're going to start a new class in our school. Bible study each day. You be sure and bring your Bible with you every day to school. Listen, there's people out there that wants to grow. They want to do something with their life. They want to make a difference in the world and in their country. Now, this man, you may not see him very clearly, but we're just coming out of the school, and this old man, that's his house, the bar's up around his front door, and he said something to one of the Gideons I did not understand. They all speak Spanish. But he reached in his pocket and gave him a copy of the Word of God. And he began to share with him what's going on. Do you notice anything different? He took his hat off. His eyes were looking straight at Horatio. And he's sharing with him God's plan for his life. This, 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 is a, this, is, this book is sharp and it's powerful. I spoke at Bethel Baptist Church three weeks ago today. You ever been to a Spanish service? Anybody? It starts at 9 and it's over at 2. And it gets more exciting as time goes on. I mean, we've, we've been having music now, Pastor. I mean, things will be bouncing here today. But I asked this pastor when I was visiting with him about the service that morning, and he shared with me he was going to give me 30 minutes. That's really 15. Interpreter back and forth. But he says, we're glad you're here. We want you to share with our people about the Gideon ministry. And I said this to him. I said, Pastor Miguel, how did you come to know Jesus? A big smile came on his face. He said, 16, 17 years ago when the Gideons were here in this city, I was a young schoolboy. And they were distributing Bibles on the street. And as I came by, I decided, well, he says I was a little mischievous. He said, I decided, how many can I get without getting caught? I said, how many did you get? He said, eight. He said, that's stealing, isn't it? I said, well, I don't know what you're going to tell me, but go ahead. And he said, I began to read one of those little testaments. And I got troubled. He said, I read Revelation chapter 3. And he said, I couldn't understand it. I went to a local pastor that I knew, and I began to ask him questions. And he began to share with me that Jesus was knocking on my heart's door. He said, I've never experienced anything like this before. And he said, through that little testament, I gave my life to Jesus. Dollar, 30 cents. And he said, I gave the other seven away. Is that not how God works? He righted the wrong. Peru. Predominantly Catholic. Spoke to the headmaster at this girl's all-girls school. If we could distribute Bibles in his school, please. And this is what he said. He said, you can share with them the plan of salvation if you'd like. Wow. And here they are praying to ask Jesus into their heart and life. Your fingerprints in Peru? Is your fingerprints around the world? Now here's a little girl that was in the fourth or third grade. We distributed Bibles at that school, and I saw this little face. She had listened to the interpreter. She would listened as I made the presentation. The interpreter had shared with them about the Bibles and the grades that they could get them. We started to fifth grade, and we go up. She didn't get one that day. She wasn't old enough. You know, we have an awesome task at the international headquarters deciding who gets the Bibles for the next year. 
How many of this country gets? How many of this country gets? And boy, it's tough. Peru's going to get two million copies of God's Word this coming year. Two million. I hope she gets one. I don't know what she's thinking. That's just how we are. We operate. That's how we, we're, a, we're a disciplined ministry. We begin in the fifth grade when we make the distributions. Matthew 28, 19 speaks very clearly to this. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now when, when Jesus says, Thomas, take your finger and put it into my hand, and he says, take your hand and thrust it into my side. That's exactly what he did. And whenever he says in his word is to go into all the world, he just doesn't mean North Carolina and South Carolina. He doesn't mean just the USA. He means all the world. We have an awesome responsibility because we're all part of the body of Christ. Why God chose me to be in the Gideons, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for doing it. It's been a call on my life. You may be here today and you say, well, I'd like to be part of that ministry. You can. Everyone here, you can pray that the doors would continue to be open, that the funds would still be available, and we can distribute those Bibles free, no charge, because of you. You may be here today and say, as a man, or you may say, a businessman, professional man, born again, good standing of the church, have a testimony for Christ, say, I'd like to be part of that ministry. I spoke to a young man last night. I don't know if he's here today or not. At one of your local businesses. And I was telling him about the Gideon ministry. I'm not going to, he's not here. I don't see him. He said, man, I'd like to be part of that. I said, you can. You can be part of it. We're getting ready to have an international convention right here in your area next year in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to have representatives from over 100 countries that will be right here in your area, Pastor. There might be even one coming to your church. I don't know. I know you've had some, you've had some good ones here. You've had some people here that, have, that it's, they're just normal people just like me. They're honored to come. But Jesus says to us to go into all the world. And share the good news. And what a blessing it is. And you may be here today and say, well, I'd like to be part of this ministry. And I know your church supports it. And Pastor, what, a, what an honor to stand here. The only group that he lets have his pulpit here. Brother, we're honored. I mean, it's a blessing. It's not this way everywhere. But there's boys and girls in the balance. There's men and women in the balance. And when Jesus says to go into all the world, that's where we go. Let me tell you, as the Gideons, we pay our own money. God's blessed us. We take care of everything we do. We take care of our plane tickets. We take care of our food. We take care of the fuel for the other Gideons when we're there in those countries. I mean, we make ourselves available to do what God wants us to do. So whatever you do today, and I know your church supports the Gideon ministry, 100% of everything you do today goes to purchase and place the border. You say, what's the place part? Well, we've got to print it and we've got to ship it. For a dollar and 30 cents, you can't even buy a glass of tea in Charlotte, North Carolina. But think about the impact, the worldwide impact of one scripture reaching a boy's or girl's hand, going into a family, going into a school, going into a prison. It's not going to return for it. Today as you leave, you're going to see the Gideon card rack expressions outside, and I know your church supports it very much, and we want to say thank you for that. You might want to send a card in memory of someone or in recognition or, or uh, thanking of them. That Bible's placed somewhere in a motel room, hospital bedside table, and people come by and pick it up and begin to read it and become closer and through it all come to know Jesus as their Savior. Pastor Rick, I don't know how to say thank you, brother. Been a blessing to be here. My first time here. What do you want to do when you grow up? You want to make a difference? 
you can today. I'm going to be at the back to shake hands with you, and I'm sure Brother Tom and some of the other Gideons are probably going to be there taking off. If you didn't come prepared today, that's okay. Maybe you just want to tear this off and take it home with you and read about the Gideons. And if you make your check out, it's all tax deductible, 100%. We're a nonprofit organization. See that ticket? Priorities. Priorities. Isn't it amazing what God wants to do when you put Him first? May God bless you. Thank you.